All right, so the first example I'm going to do is xenon trioxide, XCO3. All right, so let's go through the steps. First of all, this is a neutral compound, so you don't have to worry about splitting up the positive and negative ions. Next step, count the valence electrons. Don't let the fact that it's xenon scare you. The noble gases, uh, treat them just like you would any other element. So uh, the xenon has eight valence electrons. The oxygens contribute six each, giving us a total of 26 valence electrons to use to put these three atoms together. The formula would imply that the xenon's in the middle and start by putting and oxygens are on the outside. So these start with putting single bonds to hold everything together to start with. Um, that is six of the electrons. Next step, put three unshared pairs of electrons around all the outer non-hydrogen atoms, which is all of the outer atoms. So we've got six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we've got three unshared pairs around all the outside oxygens. We have one more pair of electrons to distribute. So the next step says that if that's the case, put them on that central atom. So this is our skeletal structure and we are not done yet. So look at, um, first of all, is everything happy as far as the octet rule goes? So by octet counting, remember you count all of the shared electrons, all of the oxygens have the eight that they want, and the xenon also actually has eight electrons by octet counting. So um, the octet rule is happy here, but next thing is look at the formal charges. And in that case, remember for formal charges, split up the shared electrons. So each of the oxygens can be assigned one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons by formal charge counting in this case. Oxygen usually has six valence electrons, which means that these all have a formal charge of negative one. The central one, uh, xenon, it has the two unshared pairs, and you can assign an additional one, two, three, so a total of five electrons via formal charge counting. It normally has eight, which means that the central xenon in this configuration has a plus three formal charge. This is not good. Usually the way that you can fix formal charge is by redistributing electrons, making double bonds. And so for example, uh, if we were to move this one to an unshared pair, the, um, the formal charge electron count on this oxygen becomes six which is what oxygen usually has. So we've, there's no formal charge on that oxygen atom. The electron count for the xenon is now one, two, three, four, five, six. It normally has eight, so we've improved that to plus two. Now, even though, uh, but we have overfilled the octet for xenon, but since xenon is a third row or greater element, we can do that if the formal charge gets better. So we're not going to stop there. So if we make each of these oxygen xenon bonds a double bond, so now each oxygen only has two lone pairs on it. None of them have a formal charge. The formal charge on the xenon is now, by the electron count will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It normally has eight valence electrons. So the octet rule is rigidly satisfied for oxygen, which is good. Um, we have an expanded octet for xenon, but it's okay because it's in the third row or greater. And we've got no formal charge anywhere. So this is actually about as good as the little structure you can get for xenon trioxide. Now, Vesper theory. What does this molecule actually look like? So we have four electron domains around here. Remember that multiple bonds still only count as one domain. So you've got the three bonding domains and the one unshared pair, which means
The electronic geometry is tetrahedral. That's the geometry for the, that you get for four pairs. So what does this actually look like? Um, well, I'm going to arbitrarily choose the unshared pair and one of the oxygens to be in the plane of this board. Another um, of the double bond oxygen is coming out down and out um, towards you, and the other one is going down and into the board. And so the molecular geometry is going to be trigonal pyramidal. And if I know what that looks like, so in this structure right here, the red spheres are the oxygen atoms, the lavender one in the middle is the xenon, the white one would be the lone pair. So this shows you the tetrahedral electronic geometry. And if you ignore the electrons, um, that's the trigonal planar geometry of the molecule. And that's xenon trioxide.